Hi, I'm Mrs. D Math. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over adding and subtracting decimals in seventh grade math. This is going to include not only reviewing adding and subtracting decimals, but also incorporating your integer sign rules. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we're adding and subtracting decimals, we need to remember to line up the decimals and then we still have to follow our sign rules. So if both our decimals are positive, or both our decimals are negative, we would add those together and keep our sign. But if we're subtracting, we need to remember to put the number with the larger absolute value on top. So let's go ahead and try a couple of practice problems. So first here we have negative four and 52 hundredths plus a negative eight and 23 hundredths. So if these were both positive, we would just add them together and it would be a positive answer. Since they're both negative, we're actually still going to add these together, but our answer is going to end up being a negative. So let's go ahead and first we need to line up our decimals. And since we are technically adding these together, I'm gonna go ahead and just put an addition sign, and then we'll go back and deal with our sign rules as soon as we're finished adding the numbers. So here we have two plus three is five, five plus two is seven, bring down our decimal, and four plus eight is 12. So this answer ends up being a negative 12 and 75 hundredths. So again, if these were both positive, we would still add them and keep our sign, um, but according to our sign rules, if they have the same sign, in this case, they're both negative, I'm gonna go ahead and add the numbers together, and I'm gonna keep the sign, which in this case, they're both negative. So let's try another one. So this problem is now a negative three and eight tenths and a positive one and 49 hundredths. So now this one is going to follow the subtracting rule because one's positive and one's negative. I'm actually going to subtract the numbers. But just like when I'm subtracting whole values, I still have to subtract the larger number minus the smaller number. So in this case, three and eight tenths is actually a larger absolute value. So when I line up my decimals, three and eight tenths is gonna go on top. And because I have more digits on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and add a zero here for a placeholder. Now I can subtract, but I need to borrow first. And so once I borrow, 10 minus nine is one, seven minus four is three, bring down my decimal, and three minus one is two. And then I'm gonna go back to the original problem, and because the larger absolute value is a negative, my answer is actually going to be a negative two and 31 hundredths. So same thing as we've learned before, we've learned our integer rules, and we've also learned how to add and subtract decimals. Now we're just putting everything together. So now let's go ahead and try the same thing with a couple of word problems. So here we have Sam, and Sam ordered chicken nuggets for $3.75, fries for $1.85, and a drink for 95 cents. If he paid with a $10 bill, how much change would he receive? So let's set up the problem first. We need to add up all of our prices here. So $3.75 plus $1.85 plus 95 cents. And once I add all those together, I'm going to subtract that answer from $10 to find out how much change Sam is going to get back. So in order to add the numbers that are in the parentheses, I'm going to line up my decimals and add everything together and bring down my decimal. So now in the original problem, I'm going to solve $10 minus the $6.55 that I'm spending to find out how much I'm going to receive in change. So 10 minus 6.55. So I need to add a decimal and two zeros in order to have everything line up properly. And now I can go ahead and borrow. So I'm gonna borrow from the zero all the way down to the one. And now I can go ahead and subtract. So 10 minus five is five, nine minus five is four, bring down my decimal, and nine minus six is three. So Sam is going to receive $3.45 in change. 
So let's try a different word problem here. Joe currently has $65.45 in his account. If he's gonna write a check for $95.75, how much will his account balance be? So let's talk about what's happening here because we know he's writing a check, which means this is going to be subtracted from his account. So if he currently has $65.45 and he's going to subtract $95.75, we need to find out how much money is going to still be in his account. In this case, we can tell that he's actually not going to have any money left in his account, but we can rewrite this into an addition problem. If you don't like subtracting the larger number and you like it to look like a negative, you can rewrite this to add the opposite. So then we would end up with $65.45 plus a negative $95.75. But either way you like to do this, we do know we have to subtract these numbers. And since we're subtracting, we need the larger absolute value on top. So I am going to line this up with 95.75 minus 65.45. And then I can go ahead and subtract my numbers. So five minus five is zero, seven minus four is three, bring down my decimal, and nine minus six is three. So that means that Joe is going to have a negative $30.30 balance on his account. So in this case, in order to get back to zero, he would need to put $30.30 into his account. I hope this video was a good review on adding and subtracting decimals, as well as incorporating those decimal problems with your integer rules. Thank you for joining me. I'm Mrs. D Math. This has been adding and subtracting decimals in seventh grade math. Have a great day. Bye.